Hello, my friends. How's everyone today? I hope you're I hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, I'm in Windermere, Florida. This is uh, July 20th, and we are in the uh, the heat of summer. Uh, just quickly, I'll tell you that it's eight. It's just after 10 o'clock. It's a sunny day. I'm on the back porch where it's a little shadier, but uh, it is still extremely warm. It's 82 degrees uh, and 83% uh, humidity, so it is drippy wet. And uh, I'm trying to uh, work on some of my seed saving uh, projects here. And uh, as you can see, I've got, uh, or maybe you don't recognize them, but these are marigold seeds. They're, to me, they're always very distinctive because they have that, that little look that um, it, it kind of, I don't know, it just for some reason or other reminds me of uh, Indian feathers. Uh, you know, when you see a, an American Indian with a um, big headdress of days of yo, and uh, it's always the, the little pointed things. But anyway, I just wanted to show these to you. This is just one little head, and I'm going to try and pull it apart here. And uh, there's several, three, four seeds in there. And um, anyway, I've focused better on the, on the base there. And show you that I've got quite a few that are just, this is in the top of it and just trying to take that uh, casing off of it. This is the back part of the seed head, uh, the seed pod, and uh, the part that it actually uh, it protects all the seeds and allows them to just kind of dry. But as you kind of go along, you can you can just kind of pull these off and, and as it dries, they will, uh, they will um, disengage from this is actually the the base of it. And then of course then you had the stem coming out here and uh, holding the plant up. But it's an it, interesting looking di uh, to um, dissect the whole thing and take it apart and and just save those seeds. But anyway, this was my American Harvester uh, dehydrator. These are the uh, a couple of the the racks. The harvester after 35 years finally, or 25 years, third. Uh, I guess it. I guess it has been pretty close to 30 years that he finally gave up the ghost. And instead of throwing the whole thing away, I decided to save the racks and use them for my seed drying. So uh, what I did is I actually had these spread out on each one of these racks and I, I just want to show you that I had one and two I still have a few caught up there but look at what I've saved isn't this incredible I don't think I've ever saved this many before but these are dry and there's thousands thousands of seeds and I could I could do a do a whole field full of marigolds and this particular I can still feel it has just a little bit of moisture in it I'm not going to if I do anything I'll probably take these inside the house and let them dry out uh, our temperature inside is 78 degrees and the humidity is about 45 percent so I will let those go ahead and dry out a little bit better. I wanted to show you, for those of you who don't remember what I was was growing, it was, I have two different types of marigolds. Um, I have French marigolds and I just started growing those um, out in the backyard again and that's that's more like this type where it's just as small and it has a little bit of a uh, it, it, they look almost like little seashells, and it's a much smaller variety of marigold. And that this particular variety came from is from uh, Johnny Seeds. But then the African marigold is the one that looks like a big pom pom. I don't know if I'm getting that picture in there right for you. This is Baker's Creek, 
and they have that type. Uh, but most, I mean, you can, you can go to any any store and see uh, the, any little seed store. Your grocery store sometimes carries them, any of the big box stores. But uh, this year I just thought I would save just to see how many I could get. And I have to say a lot of them went over the back fence while I was, uh, I had them as my companion plants for the tomatoes that I had growing at in Juicy Fruit Island. And I wanted to um, uh, have those as, as a companion plant. I want to just pull this, I want to just pull this off so that I can take you out of here. I'm still playing with my, there we go. Okay, now I've got you. And playing with my tripod here that Rick bought for me for for a birthday present. And it's as good as it is, it's a pain. <laughs> I don't feel I have control over it. But anyway, wouldn't you, uh, what would you do, what would you do if you had thousands of these seeds? I'm certainly not going to sell them. But I'm sure I will pass them on to a few people here and there. But um, I had them out growing out in Juicy Fruit Island uh, here during the spring. And uh, as the tomatoes ripened and I pulled those out, then the uh, marigolds also uh, died back. And I wanted to save some of those seeds, so I captured those pretty quickly. So as you can see, the sun, if it's if it's 80, 82 and 80 percent humidity here on the back porch, it probably feels a heck of a lot hard, hotter out there because my sensors are in here in the shade. So um, anyway, that was that was all I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to say that if you get a chance to save some seeds, go right ahead. Uh, it's always nice to be able to look forward. Come winter, I can look at those seeds and go, ooh, look what I have to plant for next year. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, garden what you've got. I hope you guys are all well and that you're enjoying your summer. Uh, for those of our friends uh, in England, I hope you get some rain soon and cooler weather. And uh, ours won't be coming for probably another uh, eight or nine weeks. Somewhere in October we start to cool off. So. Take care, everyone. I hope you'll ring the bell and subscribe and come back and see me again soon because you know I'll be here. Bye-bye.